Hi everyone, today we're here to talk about Galahad's birth story. I actually never talked about um, his the story of my labor and delivery um, on this channel or like in general because to me it's really hazy and that's why I have Michael here because like I, I honestly don't remember like 90% of what happened. Mm. So um, Michael will take it away and whenever I remember something I can just pop in. Okay, so it's a Sunday. July 7th, 2013. 2013. Mm. And this summer is like a really hot summer. This week in particular, it's a really hot and humid week. Uh, we're getting ready to go to church, but her water breaks. She's sitting down on the computer, her water breaks. and I wonder why we wanted to go to church when I was like 41 weeks pregnant. Because it was <laughs> such a smooth pregnancy. It was like... That's oh, true. I was like, you're writing yeah, all along. It's that's easy. True. Okay. When her water broke, it was green colored, and she called her midwife. Yeah. And the midwife said that it's meconium. Meconium is uh, the baby. Basically, it's the baby's poo. That is when the baby poos inside the the womb. It mixes with the amniotic fluid, and it's like greenish, blackish, and then it's this meconium. And so the midwife says, okay. But they're not supposed to poo until they're born. Yeah. But because I was late, he had already pooed. Yep. The midwife said. You know, take a shower, get ready, we got out of the hospital, and get the baby out. Because I wasn't showing any signs of labor, mm. or any, like, anything at all. Yeah. And so we get to the hospital at, like, 2.30ish p.m. that day, that Sunday. And uh, it takes, like, an hour to, you know, sign all the papers, get ready, wait, find a place, get hooked up to, like, the whole IV system. Yeah. Oxytocin, hormone. Induc yeah. inducing that's supposed to induce the contractions yeah that that process that whole thing it takes like an hour and we start around 4 p.m if i recall in the beginning it was like every minute or something like a drop would drop and then slowly our uh, midwife would increase the dosage of this uh chemical hormone mm. as the dosage count increases. increased uh, her pain increased obviously, oh, obviously. <laughs> and, and in the beginning she was like ah oh, you know my pain is like a, a one out of ten, ten. And then i think i think if i recall you were like 1.3 yeah. 1.5 and later it became two and when it was like two you were like starting to breathe and then you had to practice breathing and it was a long long uh induction it, yeah, was, it was in total it was 23 hours mm. She got her, so we were there at 3, she got her epidural 7 or 8 in the morning. So it was like 17 hours, correct me if I'm wrong. I didn't want to get any extra like chemicals in, but then mm. that day I learned that like induction's best friend is an epidural because yeah. they're artificial contractions, they're, they're more intense than if they were to be natural and like I don't know what I was thinking, wanting to do an induction without an epidural. But yeah, they yeah. they put the anesthesia in me, and I was like, I was like, please yeah. give me the epidural now. I need it. <laughs> right, and she totally changed after taking it because 17 hours, 17 hours into this induction process, she didn't take the epidural. So her pain levels were going from like three to three point five to four. You know, these are like hour spans, yeah. right? And then I like remember it going up five, to like eight. five, six. Yeah, she started like eight, eight point five, and when I it was like, like I can't do this anymore. when it was like since five, you were like. Deep breathing, and when I was going like eight, it was intense. Like you really, yeah, really like, breathing it. Yeah, like at up. least I could breathe through the other ones. But mm. then when it was like eight point five, I couldn't breathe. Like I couldn't. I I I I, just, I couldn't. Yeah, and you had to go to the washroom every hour or something. And you didn't sleep all night. Like you couldn't sleep. All the, like you couldn't sleep. Yeah, every pain. like few minutes, I'm in pain. I took like two really short naps. I remember going to Timmy's, you know, at this hospital, and I I just really wanted this like jalapeno bagel. <laughs> Okay. I I know I remember weird things. Okay, <laughs> that's so random. I still like their handle pin even. <laughs> so after taking the epidural, it seemed like you had no pain at all, and you were I just know. like, ah. Oh, Wait, geez. when did they give me the popsicle? Was it before we started? Or? No, it was at night time. Shortly after taking the epidural, you keep getting closer to the camera. Oh. <laughs> Shortly after taking the epidural, though, uh, you weren't diet like she wasn't dilating. She was only at three centimeters. And you're supposed to go up to 10 for the baby to come like for the for mm -hmm. you to start pushing And even though you weren't feeling pain with the epidural I, just, I was really uncomfortable at the really high dosage of oxytocin that you were taking like the drops were coming down every like three seconds or something 
every three, two or three seconds. It was a really high dosage, but you were only dilating like three centimeters. And then, you know, they, they were like, I remember the, mid, the midwives and like the doctors, nurses were saying, normally people would have dilated a lot more at this time. Mm. Uh, but for Nami's case, it wasn't so. Uh, the baby started to get really stressed. Uh, Nami had a bacterial infection, and so her yeah, fever was going really they high. They said that if your water breaks, your the membrane protecting your uterus also like it's it's gone. Mm -hmm. So there's more higher chances of infection in your uterus, and that's what happened to me. Mm. Is um, my uterus had a bacterial infection, yeah. and then I had a fever because of the infection. And it's not like I can take antibiotics while giving birth. So mm. um, they said that my fever was going high and then the baby was um the heart rate is was really high too mm. so then yeah they said that i need to get an emergency c-section yeah so your fever was like high 38 the baby's heartbeat was like 2 220 230 it was going really high and they would have both died like one thing that i realized that day was how thankful I am for the advance advancement of medical technology that we have mm. because it wasn't for me us living at this time now and in this country like, and in this country they would have died yeah. or she might have had to go through like an emergency section with like no anesthetics like, oh my gosh and I can't imagine seeing and like like Nami going through that kind of suffering because that day would have been totally different it would have been not the day that my son was born and, and that you gave like you, you you went through all of this and you gave birth but it would have been the day that i would have lost you and my son that would have totally marked a different path to my life if it wasn't right. for the technology that we have today so i was really thankful that really engraved something in my heart that day uh, that's just a thankfulness and the realization that this could have gone to totally different way and that still affects me today it's just being thankful for being thankful for where you are now and also really realizing it just makes it so real like it, it sobers you kind yeah of. yeah it sobers you it sobers yeah. you and um what Didn't happened it? you uh, have to be taken into so Oh yeah, I had, to, I had to sign this the papers for a C-section and I had like been drugged up times mm. two because of the oxytocin and then the epidural and then I was like sleeping because I was like knocked out until they woke me up. So they asked me to sign the papers and it's like about the risks of doing C-section. It's like a, a waiver paper, mm. whatever. So I signed it and my signature was like the ugliest thing on this earth because uh, because I was like 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 it didn't it looked like a squirrel climbing up a tree <laughs> mm. so she had to be prepared for the operation it takes like two hours i i didn't see her for like an hour I yeah was like, i remember I they were like wait. they had to roll me to one side put a sheet under me and then roll me to the other side and then unfold the sheet roll me properly lift me up using that sheet to like a wheelie bed and then and then reel me to the operation room and then lift me onto the operation table and then roll the sheet out of me again uh, like out from under me and i remember the operation room was really cold and the table was really cold i remember I, I felt like i was gonna fall off the table because it's really narrow like it's as narrow as your body and um it was really cold and i remember i was only wearing my hospital gown so they had all these blankets on top of me uh, to keep me warm and they were like heated blankets they were so cozy and nice that's nice <laughs> and then I had to get into a suit, like a whole full suit, <laughs> covering everything, my head. He looked so funny. He looked like, like my arms yeah. everywhere, and then down all the way to my my legs. And, and he had to put some plastic some bags on his on his so uh, shoes. Yeah, on his shoes yeah. with like yeah. one of those plastic head like yeah. shower caps. So the operation begins. She kept on saying she had to throw up, so I had to hold a cup by her mouth for like I don't know twenty minutes during the operation, and the baby comes out. And the first, my first thought is like, whoa, that looks like my, my dad, but a baby version of my dad. It's just, it was kind of weird. And, and then I thought like, whoa, I'm a father now. And that, I remember that moment too, that feeling of being a father. It, it's it, it, it's kind of like seeing a new, I like to explain it like this. 
It's like seeing a new spectrum of light that you've never seen before. Like, all of a sudden you can see ultraviolet rays. Yeah, and it, you, you just can't ignore it. It just affects every part of your life. The way you think and mm. you act and your your whole like your whole plan, being yeah you know what you want your, your goals in life it just You're changes so you so close to the camera it changes you he failed the apgar test which is which is uh, i think correct me if i'm wrong i think it's three scales measuring breathing attention attentiveness and crying or something and uh, i remember i was looking at it and he he he, he scored like below five on all I don't remember, but he failed it. So he was, he had to go to the neonatal intensive care unit. He had to be in an incubator. I don't know if it was before they did the test or not, because I was like out of it. I, I think I passed out like two or three times. Mm. Like I blacked out. But um, I remember like one at one point, they brought this thing close to my face and they, they were like, this is your baby, give it a kiss. And then I turned and I gave it a kiss and it was like the softest kiss ever. Like it mm. was like butter made out of feathers and I remember his skin was so like it it didn't even it felt like I don't know air or something it was mm. so soft and then I remember they were like cleaning him or something and you were there too maybe that was when they were doing the test because you guys were like like at a wall mm. and I remember looking at them like I turned my head to look at them and thinking about like this is my family now and like this is my family and growing up it was just me and my mom and my mom um, she was working like full time all the time and so basically it was just me and I have no like concept of family and like I never had family so when I was looking at them and like this this concept of family and like this feeling of family I got like so emotional and I was crying <laughs> and then my um my midwife's assistant she was so i'm lying down right she was sitting like next to my head and she was just like dabbing my eyes with t with a tissue <laughs> because i was like crying i couldn't stop crying and she was just going like pop pop and she was like it's okay <laughs> so mm. yeah i remember that and then they took him away and i was like i think i like passed out again i don't remember i was following him into the the care center and they said you know they'll take care of him and he was hooked up to the whole thing yeah like a because he couldn't breathe on his own stuff. because he swallowed so much of and then the they put like lots of like measuring stuff on him too. Mm, yeah, yeah to measure his beating and heart rate and stuff uh so i was calling people to update them on on the whole situation <laughs> and stuff <laughs> why i can't talk about this my eyes are so itchy you know and then oh my gosh it's like a cat itch yeah it's because you were touching her and that day was crazy. It rained in two hours what it normally rains in like a month. Yeah, and I remember it was it was a rainstorm was no, that day. There like, was a thunderstorm. Like there were like a couple hundred thousand people in Toronto that didn't have electricity. Yeah, there was a power outage. Any of you guys living in GTA you remember two summers ago this crazy summer storm, storm. that flooded everything, like the gold station. Yeah, even the trains, hospital didn't have power. Union station. The hospital didn't have power, for and like we were five using hours. like generators to yeah. keep things going. And can you imagine that day was like thirty something degrees at night? Can you imagine being in a hospital room with no air condition, with a whole bunch of like crying babies in this in like in like one room with like four other four other four other you know moms, moms yeah. with newborns? Later, we got into we 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 went to a semi private room. You can keep but they were all full. All of the, all of the private rooms and the semi-private rooms were full, so we couldn't get into them. We had to wait until one of them would kind of come out. I remember after the surgery, though, they wheeled me into like this waiting area room, um, and then they had to like make sure I was okay, or whatever. I don't know. I don't know what they were doing. I was just waiting there, and I remember the midwife and the nurses were um, pressing onto my uterus to help it contract back into its original mm. size and I remember it was like so painful they had to do that like four times in total I think but that was the first time they did it and it was so painful because like they're like massaging my stomach and like it was really painful and apparently when Michael saw them doing it another time there was a lot of blood coming out do you remember yeah it's I don't know how detailed I can get but it's a lot of blood, a lot of blood come out. Probably to feel like... But the thing is, I bled more than like yeah, usual because 
my yeah. uterus was cut um and i had to get a blood transfusion because they mm. said i lost a lot of blood yeah. so they transfused like two units of blood around the size of my hand plastic bags of blood mm. and i remember having to sign another waiver form <laughs> And like thinking, oh no, my signature is so ugly again because I had just come out of surgery and like I was like blacking out. We stayed at the mother and baby ward, but usually the newborns are with their mothers. But then I was just by myself because Galahad was in the NICU. I remember there was this really rude woman beside us. I don't, I don't remember really clearly, but I remember she was really like she was like. She was like watching movies or like playing really loud music and I hadn't been sleeping the previous night well and mm. like I just had surgery and like I needed to rest but then she was being so inconsiderate and like I don't know she was being like Michael had to tell them like three times to lower their volume and there's four like moms in total in that room like you can't just be playing loud m movies with gunshot noises in a room with mothers who just delivered and have newborns who are sleeping in that room too it's just like what's wrong with you i wrote her like a like a please like thing like really nicely because i explained my situation too like i just had 23 hours of labor and i had to do an emergency c-section and like it was really hard and whatever like please be considerate of people and like we would really appreciate if you could like lower your volume and whatever like do whatever and then my writing was so messy because i was like drugged up and like like out of it and i just came out of surgery and it was hard to breathe mm -hmm. and it was hard to move so michael rewrote it for me and then he gave it to her and then after that she kind of she was okay after that right but then we left shortly after mm. i think we left like the day after or that day we left that day we moved rooms it was just like a constant repeat of the same thing. I had to go every four hours to nurse Galahad in the NICU. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes we would change his diaper there. Mm -hmm. um, most of the stuff the nurses did. But like whenever we were there, we would like um, learn how to do things. And yeah. the thing, the one thing that I'm really grateful about staying in the hospital for so long, we stayed for like a total of six days, was that I had like such great training from the nurses on uh, like breastfeeding and we heard like different things from different people and different tips from different people so that was really helpful like i know um a lot of women struggle with breastfeeding and for us like that was that for me especially it was a blessing i remember when we were at the semi-private room every time i got up it was so hard to live <laughs> like i remember taking two minutes to get off my bed because mm. Even to breathe, I had to breathe so slowly because everything hurt, Every it, like it was so painful. The most painful part other than the incision was the actual intestinal processes that mm. the anesthetic stops. So you get really gassy after surgery. I had so much gas pain. It was like, it felt like, like 10 knives, kitchen knives like stuck into my stomach and every time I moved it like would like jiggle or something i don't know mm. i don't know how to explain it it was really painful and so they they encouraged me to walk a lot around the hospital to get my organs running again they gave me the hospital food i actually really like the hospital food mm. and it was it was great choosing my meals every day you stayed at the hospital too sometimes and he would share the bed with me <laughs> every time he got off the bed like he had to get off so slowly and get on so slowly because even just a little jerk of the bed would make me in like make me feel like i'm in so much pain like it was so painful everything mm. was so painful and one thing that i remember about that time was that he said <laughs> what what did i say what did i say you said <laughs> you said oh what did, what did you say i feel like that time of you like you were so beautiful or something like that yeah. and like he was so in love with me at the time that he, like nothing mattered and he could he could help me yeah. in any way that i could because i was so helpless and because the funny thing is because i was in so much pain and even breathing was hard i couldn't talk properly and it literally took me like two seconds 
to say one word. My eyes are and so I have much to pain. talk like this because everything <sighs> was so painful. Yeah. And Michael's having an allergic reaction right now. <sighs> because he was, shower. he was petting the cat earlier. I have to go shower. Can I go? Okay, you can go. Okay. Yes. Okay, sorry. Because I, I couldn't get angry. I didn't yell and stuff because I was in so much pain. While walking through through the hospital after my surgery and everything, I was bent over like this. And this is my head. I'm holding onto an IV pole and I was like walking so slowly. And near the end of the week when I could finally walk a kind of properly, I was still walking like slower than a grandma. When I was walking past some nurses, they had said, oh, you look so much better than you did before like oh you look like you're you're recovering well because before i had been walking like this and then i could finally walk straight it was not an easy time but it was a really humbling experience and i think we were so blessed by everything that happened i'm kind of worried about this next labor and birth because i'm i'm currently four weeks away from the our second baby's due date so we're gonna try for a VBAC, uh, which is vaginal birth after cesarean section, but it has to be really specific in how the labor progresses and the labor has to be spontaneous, which last time it wasn't. I'm sure things will be okay. Um, pray for us, please. So that's the story of Galahad's birth. I hope I edit it in a way where um, it's short and concise. Ugh! And now he's this big and he's healthy. <laughs> in his ninja turtle pajama onesie and he's so cute and yeah that was how he was born it was a crazy time you don't remember it though galahad and you're gonna be a hyunga soon galahad you're gonna be a hyunga when baby zeke is born right are you gonna be a good hyunga you're gonna be a good hyunga we will see you guys very soon. <sighs> I don't know if baby number two would already be born yet. Um, probably by the time this video goes up. But um, if you guys want uh, more frequent updates, then follow me on Instagram because I post on there very frequently. Um, and that's it. So I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Mwah. New little stretcher. All the private rooms and the semi-private rooms are full, so we couldn't get into them. We had to wait until one of them would kind of come out. It's like everyone's because because the whole. Uh, I have to wait for you, Nami. I can't talk. My I took wash my face. Oh, I'm so pregnant. Can you lower his volume? Can you lower his volume? I think that's too loud. No, for him. Oh. I said lower the volume, not close the door, you crazy. He's gonna go deaf. <sighs> so, yeah, it was a really stormy day. I forget. <laughs> You're so close to the camera.